Thank you, Bianca. Now we have come to the first panel Q&A session to wrap up all the morning lectures. I would like to invite Mr. Zaidi of Malaysia Rail Link and Mr. Rudianto of IMBRT to be back on screen. And please warm welcome to our special guest, Mr. Mark Stipe from Petra Transit System, as well as our moderator, architect Ong Yek Seng, who will direct audience questions to the panelists. For all the audience, please post a question in the chat box if you have not done so. You would not want to miss this. Hand it over to you, Mr. Ong. Thank you, Kai Yi, and uh, thank you again, um, uh, Inche Zaidi, Inche Rudianto, and a special thank you for Mark uh, to because uh, we have lost quite a few speakers this morning, and um, and thanks for coming in and 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 make it a little bit more burga as we call it, a little bit more happening. Um, and also I think Mark can offer a lot of things that he has seen throughout the world. So um, without much ado, I'm just going to go straight into I guess a question that's going to be arising from some of the questions that's going to be arising from. Uh, the, the the listeners, but I'm going to start by uh, throwing something uh, to 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 both uh, to all three panelists. But I think um, because really um, we I, I'm going to touch a little bit on TOD, which I think Chit's um, ID didn't have time to go into, <laughs> and the social impact of it. But um, you know the real link X the the type of transport system, um, let's say for ECRL, which is much more destination based and long distance versus a bus rapid transit or even an RRT, MRT, which is much more uh, uh, a transit and urban system, have different challenges for uh, and, and different, maybe different strategy for um, developments to occur. Not necessarily TODs, but um, um, how do you address that? Uh, maybe um, I go to Inge's ID. Yeah, Mr. M, thank you. Um, <clears throat> yes, I think um, in 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 when we talk about TODs uh, per se, um, ECRL as a um, rail system that is supposed to be an intercity uh, rail system connecting city to another city, um, it does not pass through uh, densely populated areas. Uh, when you compare it with MRT or LRT system or metro system that you see um, throughout the world. However, we can still see some examples uh, from countries like Japan where uh, their intercity uh, rail system does have uh, uh, some significant TOD development um, around major stations uh, in, the, in, in, in their system. So I think um, it depends on, well, TOD is primarily uh, at the end of the day is a real estate uh, play. Um, so it depends on the location of the station, uh, whether it is situated uh, at a location where people would uh, would want to live. Um, I think for, for ECRL, especially it is true um, uh, as opposed to metro system, because metro system, when it goes around uh, a city, a city or densely populated area, uh, then I think um, that demand for residential, uh, commercial um, is is already there. But for ECRL, uh, it really depends on which station are we talking about. Uh, for ECRL, we do have stations in in the city uh, capital of uh, Kelantan. Terengganu, uh, Pahang, and and but not in not not, not really in Selangor. Um, maybe I, I can share the, the the plans and strategies within MRL. Um, for our TOD development, we are looking at um, just getting the station and also the, the 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 surrounding area, the land ready for future TOD development. Um, and we also talk to, to to the state government, to the local authorities around the, the station uh, on the plans to actually um, in the future, there might be um, further development of residential, commercial or maybe um, uh, some some uh, shopping malls or hotels coming up uh, next to our major stations in, for example, in Kota Baru or Kuala Terengganu. Um, so, so these are very early steps that we take, um, um, especially for for the major stations. For the minor stations, uh, very similar strategy were put in place. 
um, we think some of the minor stations uh, maybe in, in, in 15, 20 years uh, when things uh, uh, have, have further improved, um, the demand for residential and commercial induced uh, station areas might, 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 might be there. So we are also positioning ourselves by, by, um, by acquiring more land uh, around the station so that in the future when, uh, when there is uh, demand for, for TOD, we can proceed with, with some, some form of land development surrounding the station. Thank you, Inche Zaidi. Uh, Inche Rudianto, I know that uh, you all have some plans for TOD as well. Um, and and, um, and, and also, as you mentioned, there are a lot of developments that uh, can be linked to current developments, but maybe a little bit of strategy on your site that you can enlighten us with. Thank you, uh, Mr. Ed. Well, first and foremost, uh, the situation in Johor Bahru, Iskandar Malaysia, is different from the Klang Valley in terms of uh, property market. I am not an expert in that, so I won't uh, say too much on that. But again, um, addressing public transportation with TOD, that has to uh, complement each other. Um, for Johor Bahru, uh, the current situation uh, on the property market will probably necessitate uh, uh, the property developers or, the, or even us uh, at, at the government level to look into uh, the right group of people who would actually use uh, public transportation, a mass public transportation, such as uh, PRT. Now, so these are probably the best group of people for us to encourage, to allure them to live within that TOD. What I'm saying is that we do not need to build a what, 1,500 ringgit per square foot, uh, you know, within 100 meters of, of our our uh, BRT TODs because um, because you know there, there there might there might not be uh, enough takers or they or again because we have a lot of uh, overhang properties here anyway. Um, then again, looking at the needs of of mobility of the people. Uh, if, for example, the, the bulk of the public actually uh, uh, going, uh, crossing across to, to Singapore later on, and if these are the, the bulk of people that, that we want to target, then uh, uh, we have to identify uh, the, these, group, the, these groups' affordability, level of affordability. Now, we have been approached by many uh, property developers because um, naturally, the people within uh, Iskandar Malaysia, they have been staying uh, all around uh, Iskandar Malaysia all this while without any proper public transportation connectivity. So uh, the developments have been quite um, independent of public transportation plan. Uh, so with BRT coming in, uh, direct services especially, Developers have been approaching us to bring BRT direct services into their development. And that is one uh, core uh, advantage of uh, developing or implementing bus rapid transit of, because of its flexibility. If you build a rail system, you can't divert your rail yeah, into all these different, different uh, residential areas. But because we, have, we are using uh, direct services of PRT, which is an open system uh, where, whereby the direct services can also uh, benefit from the main trunk, which is dedicated route to reduce the journey time. So uh, a lot of developers have seen uh, the advantages of having our direct services connected direct or going into their development. Mr. Thank you, Jerudi. Um, Mark, any ideas or any maybe um, experience and maybe takeaways uh, from what you've seen elsewhere and maybe what you've seen in Malaysia that you think that would be uh, uh, things that you would like to see implemented or going forward? Uh, sure, thanks. Thanks, Song. <clears throat> I think uh, 
what my fellow speakers touched on is is to to put it in simple terms horses for courses in regards to TOD um, I think TOD looks needs to be looked at in regards to who you're targeting uh, what your environment is like um, again we we touch on affordable housing but the housing must be must be tailored to to the people in that particular area and uh, and that's uh, that's a key point I think okay um, I think from what we gather here is that each one has their own challenges and we basically I think um, uh, we need to look at it in the terms of how we move forward and also how the market will react but I think um, you know it, sometimes um, when we when we're in UK and London you know the the the, the verbal team is that um, the poor can't afford to live near the, the station, so they end up using um, private vehicles, whether it's a motorcycle or otherwise. Do you see this um, happening? And, and how do you kind of ensure that we talk about affordable housing just now? How do we ensure that that is uh, accounted for so that uh, people are not marginalized and it's all inclusive? Yeah, I think one of the biggest challenges for any TOD is sprawl. Um, if we look at some of the successful TODs are uh, Singapore, Hong Kong, and one of their biggest advantages is that they are a very compact, let's say, nation or, or, or state, if you would. So sprawl is always going to be a challenge to any TOD. Um, sprawl is their challenges in catchment uh, of the right people. And the more the sprawl, the more challenges you're going to have meeting the, the last mile, first mile uh, problems that, that they face. Um, and I'll be touching on it, I think, uh, with my session this afternoon. Um, now, not taking anything away from trunk lines, rail trunk lines, I think they're, they're very important. But trunk lines serve as single lines. They're very expensive, yes, they move a lot of people, but they are limited to their catchment areas because they are, sing they are, they are simply a single line. Um, is it therefore on a spoil cityscape should we be looking at at a more numerous transit system um, than than uh, trunk lines? Um, uh, trunk lines are very expensive um, and primarily designed for and and constructed for five to six hours a day, and that's your peak hours. Um, and outside of that, they're they're running anywhere from ten to thirty, forty percent capacity. Especially when you get out, you know, nine, ten o'clock at night, and these and these trains continually running, and and uh, opex costs weigh into it then, and and all these other factors. So, so I think catchment is key, um, and how do we how do we catch the furthest reaching suburbs? Okay, um, we have some questions from the um, public. Um, I think this is addressed to CRL, so this is addressed to uh, GSID. Um, the question is that will there be an express route from Port Klang straight to Kuantan, Kuala Tunggu, or Kota Baru? I guess it's not, maybe it's not an express route, maybe it's more of like a direct route so that uh, because we are running at 160 kilometer per hour, so it's still, if it stops everywhere, it still take quite a long time to reach Kota Baru, which is ultimately uh, uh, where, where, where people, the ultimate destination, I guess. Um, any any reply on that? Okay, uh, very good question. So I think um, for our passenger service, uh, looking at the the traffic projection that we have, uh, of course, Kota Baru is one of the uh, major station or major destination uh, that would uh, that would be uh, for people, for our passengers to 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 head to towards to, um, but on top of that, uh, actually, Kuantan is the highest uh, number that we expect uh, to see uh, for people to travel from uh, from from uh, Klang Valley or from ITT Gomba. So, um, if you talk about whether, uh, of you ask about whether there is a direct service from uh, ITT Gomba uh, going towards uh, Kota Baru. 
um, that will that there will not be an express service where the, that particular train uh, will not stop from ITT Gombak to Kota Baru. We foresee um, the service would be um, we we would call it express service, but it will it, it will still stop in Kuantan and Kuala Terengganu, and that particular service uh, will take uh, around four hours from ITT Gombak going straight to to Kota Baru and stopping in Kuantan and Kuala Terengganu. So that service uh, can reach Kota Baru vice versa within four hours, uh, which is a huge time saving. Um, if you compare with uh, uh, with driving or taking a bus. Uh, and even if you compare with flying, um, flying from door to door uh, will also take you uh, maybe just a little bit under four hours. Uh, but for, uh, with ECRL, I think uh, plus the, the first and last mile, we, we can complete the journey within four, four and a half hours. So I think, um, that, uh, but the question is uh, asking from Port Kelang. Yeah? So, so from, um, from yeah. Port yeah, uh, but, uh, yeah. Well, I think it doesn't really matter. I think it's, it's, it, mm. it probably is trying to indicate Fort Klang because that was the final station. So it may be just be Klang Valley or any station from Klang Valley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From, yeah. from Port Klang, we, we don't foresee a lot of uh, passenger uh, coming uh, from Port Klang, but most of the passenger will board uh, the train from ITT Gombak going towards its coast. Yep. So I think, okay. Um, uh, this come from Nick Zafri, and they say that rising steel price impact on construction costs. Um, how do you how do you actually how 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 does uh, how do you actually handle it? So this may apply to IMBRT, it may apply to uh, 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 MRL, and I'm not sure whether Mark you want to uh, uh, talk on this. Whether there's a whether there's a variation pricing or are there are there or is it uh, hedging strategies? Um, <laughs> Maybe um, Rudianto, you want to start first? <laughs> tough one, right? Yeah, tough one. I mean, it is it is what it is. The cost is is uh, you know because in this kind of Malaysia, we have to fight with Singapore as well. Whatever whatever resources that that we have, yeah. Once uh, economy has actually picked up, uh, yeah, we so. That is something that um, because the one billion ringgit comes from federal government for this project, and uh, the the money for the steel actually from there. I mean, talk, if we talk about specifically on steel, well, the, the infrastructure cost. Um, we will have to, uh, of course, together with our consultant, design and redesign. That is something that, is that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have gone through over the last what, nine, twelve months. Yeah, uh, yeah. That is that. That's a tough challenge. We we will have to take it, you know, by the take the bull by the horns. Yes. Yeah, I think I think I can add there. I, I think not only steel. I think it's it's all aspects of a of a project. Being on the contractor side most of my life is a challenge when you're going into tendering. And you put your price uh, in and uh, three, four months evaluation, uh, you can't lock in supplies until you're awarded. It's it's a challenge. It definitely is. Uh, you can be lucky and unlucky depending on the way the, the coin drops at the end. But the the um, the main factor or the main challenge is, is trying to have have good supplies and uh, and have them with you. And uh, once you're awarded, try and lock in your full order. And then, uh, if all else fails, and and the, for example, steel price goes through the roof, then I think it's it's a case of value engineering and working together potentially with the client as well, and client consultants, and uh, try and reduce reduce the price as much as possible to ease the ease the pain. Uh, if I may add, <laughs> yeah, if I may add on that, I think I think for ECRL, um, the the rising um, price of steel uh, should not affect. The total uh, construction cost because it has been uh, locked uh, when we signed the the agreement back then, um, but definitely it will affect future uh, project uh, cost. So I think that is also why the government is um, is racing to to complete this project uh, uh, as soon as possible. We actually have uh, another phase uh, in the future uh, for ECRL. We are looking into double tracking the whole the whole line. 
uh, but this uh, would, would happen depending on the demand depending on the utilization of the of the railway uh, coming into the future if there is a, a great demand uh, high utilization then definitely uh, this this uh, single track line will have to be upgraded into double track and hopefully by that time um, uh, the cost for 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 double tracking is not going to be uh, too high due to uh, if, if there's a trend of uh, high, rising steel prices. Lah. I think that is also why uh, back in 2017, uh, the government back then decided to double track the whole project, but it was uh, it was cancelled in 2019. Um, so in 2017, the project is uh, full double track, but in 2019, um, it has been cancelled because uh, uh, really the focus for the 2019 uh, review by the government is really to reduce the, the construction cost of the project. So I guess there's no magic wand, magic answer, magic bullet or whatever it is. It's something that I think uh, construction, I, I guess the construction um, industry is well known and, and kind of like <laughs> that's what we do, I guess. Okay. Um, okay, this um, question from David, uh, group CEO. Um, time frame for BRT to meet the need of transportation in JB. And also the next question is that, um, you know, right now I, I can understand, the, uh, as, you, as you mentioned before, um, the population is uh, in JB or greater JB, standard region, about 3.3 million. Um, but the projection was supposed to be like 5 million. Do you foresee that in the future, uh, the LRT and MRT system coming in as well? Or do you think that the BRT is uh, um, it is sufficient? I mean, for now, definitely. But in terms of the projection of growth in the Iskandar region as well. Yeah. All right. Thanks, David. Uh, <laughs> yeah, twenty twenty four. That's quarter one, twenty twenty four. That's that's uh, the start of of uh, revenue service state. That's our target now. Um, in terms of uh, the population and all that, uh, numbers or density is one thing now, but we are very, very conscious uh, and wary about the impact of uh, the pandemic. Yeah, that, that, you know, especially when it comes to um, our region, depending heavily on the on the growth or even the reaction of uh, Singapore. Uh, why, why I'm saying that is that um, there, there will be a time when our, our neighbor will look into uh, revising or reviewing uh, the, their, uh, their dependencies on the people from, from Malaysia. Not so much uh, the the uh, the brains and all that, but the physical uh, presence of our of, of Malaysians in in Singapore. Um, they are looking at um, you know different uh, industries where that might need less uh, human capital or digital and all that. Um, Employment uh, pattern may be different. You know, there'll be they they they, they may need uh, less uh, physical presence. Everything could be done online from uh, you know, and it's been uh, like that for a while now. So uh, the need for uh, commuters uh, mobility for work may 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 shift differently in a few years to come. Yeah. Again, uh, for for the for the, I, I believe we need to create jobs within Sikandar Malaysia and the uh, in migration from other cities from from uh, from Kota Baru, Terengganu, or Penang and all that. Then we may want to attract our Malaysians to actually come and 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 grow together with us in in Sikandar. Um, because uh, you rightly said, I guess Johorians are not uh, recreating enough numbers. Yeah, we are far behind <laughs> the target, I suppose, in Malaysia. So, yeah. 
So I, I guess the, the, the thing is that uh, BRT is probably the right system right now for JB because of the kind of um, the, the population is still kind of, uh, there are there are current permanent populations, but it's still evolving. So it's still moving around and BRT is uh, flexible enough, uh, not the trunk routes, but essentially the direct buses and things like that. It's flexible enough that it can actually be adjusted to suit when certain different areas starts to um, evolve or grow and some areas starts to decline, you know, uh, the, the, the normal, normal processes. I, I, I guess in that sense, um, yeah, we do see Johor Bahru as like kind of fluctuating from one area to another area. Okay, um, okay, this is a question. I, I'm going to reword this. It's from Cynthia Fu. Um, it says user-centric design processes and uh, how about ridership and do you think the rocket is ready? So I'm just going to reword this to everyone, uh, everyone here is that um, I guess the question is that is our rakyat ready? I mean, when MRT uh, when MRT line one open, you know, um, uh, it set a kind of standard of what the transit system is like uh, or in the future would be like in 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 Malaysia. Uh, but you know, the first few weeks were were like um, there were a lot of people that were not ready to use it, <laughs> obviously, and uh, I, and and also. I guess whether they are ready to use it is that, uh, well, I think uh, Dr. Isham as well as um, uh, even Tuan Syed has mentioned that uh, ridership is going up, but it's not actually at, in a, a trajectory that may be not as um, high as, as, as what we would like it to be because a lot of people are still using their cars. So are we ready to kind of embrace the public transportation, as well as as a country, are we ready to 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 really be the social citizen that we need to be? And this, especially maybe in areas, especially going to be um, where ECR is going towards areas that have probably not really seen a lot of transportation infrastructure, uh, which is not a bad thing, which is a good thing because we we need to close that gap. But I think this this. This has a different different connotation to it. Um, so, do you uh, want to start, uh, Mark? Do you want to start with that? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> I think what we're talking about there is the shift. Uh, everyone talks about the shift, shifting yes. from the car into the public transport. Um, okay, it's it'll be a combination of the carrot and the stick, as it always needs to be. Um, but before you go down that road, a government or yeah, let's say a government or a territory needs to look at itself and say, okay, is the transport system ready for me to force the public to use it? You know, have I got everything in order? Have I got the catchment? Have I got the last mile, first mile? Um, again, I'll go back to a, a good example, which is Singapore and, and Hong Kong. Again, it's because of the sprawl. It's easier for them, right? It's a lot easier. Uh, Malaysia, the Klang Valley is a big challenge. Let, let's let's make no mistake. Um, so the shift, um, can we do it in Malaysia? I think so. Um, but again, we need to uh, we need to attract them. And we, we need to make it attractive um, means of transport. That's that's what I want to do. That's how I want to get to work. That's how I want to get to the mall. That's what we need the public to be to be saying. So it's uh, it comes back to incentives maybe to ride. And I know the government's tried quite a few of those and one of the big ones is stop building roads, I think. <laughs> Zaidi, you want to take up on that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, when we when we were uh, developing the railway scheme, I think uh, Tuan site presentation was really detailed about uh, how do we develop railway schemes for the government's approval. So in, in the course of developing the railway scheme, uh, we do have to go down and actually do a public inspection of the project. Um, so we, in, during this public inspection, we go down and we display the alignment and we display all information about the railway uh, and the public can actually uh, give feedback uh, to us. Um, um, whatever feedback that they feel uh, they want to, 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 to say. Um, but most importantly, if, uh, if there is any objection towards the project, um, be it on, on the alignment or on the spec of the project or, or whatever. Um, so what I'm gonna, what I wanted to share here is that during the public inspection, we we always get a very very high 
a favorable response. Uh, usually it is uh, about 90% of the respondents that uh, we receive it back uh, would support the, uh, the, the, the construction of the project. And they always say that they are looking forward to use uh, this this uh, railway once it's completed. So this is this trend is uh, very um, similar uh, for people down in Kelantan, in Terengganu, in Pahang. Uh, especially for people in Terengganu, they are so excited because uh, there has never been uh, a railway in Terengganu. So they say uh, they cannot wait for this uh, project to be completed and they can use this uh, service. However, I think. Um, uh, not forgetting that uh, the key to attracting uh, uh, the rakyat or the people to actually use public transport is is, is what I think Mark has shared. This is uh, what what value are we offering? Uh, are we are we actually uh, providing them uh, with uh, with uh, some savings in terms of time or in terms of uh, cost, in terms of money? Um, in terms of comfort, are we able to provide them the, the right level of comfort? Are we able to provide the, the ease of uh, last and uh, first and last mile once they arrive at the stations? So I think all of this has gone into our planning. Uh, we are not worried about time and, and, and cost savings uh, because I think ECRL will present itself uh, with that advantage. However, in terms of comfort, uh, first and last mile, uh, we are still working with the local authority to ensure that there will be um, first and last mile connection uh, from our stations. Uh, and I think um, for, for, for those who has a, a higher, uh, a higher um, awareness about environment, I think uh, taking the electric train um, as your mode of transport will actually uh, help in reducing carbon emission. So that, that is also something that we will put forward uh, once the train is in operation. We will um, ensure that people know that uh, their carbon footprint, carbon emission uh, is, is much lower if they take this uh, electric train compared to other mode of transport that is uh, available on the road right now. Wrap it up uh, on that uh, item, maybe in Geridian too. Um, it's... We we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Yeah, I know you did a lot. Um, you did a lot of uh, <laughs> with the with the public. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, because over here we plan the system since 2011, and then we um, officially launched it in 2017. And the, the public are probably now are sick and tired of 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 nothing is happening on the ground. You see when so. Yeah, um, yes, it's the proof for the pudding is, you know, so we have to uh, keep the momentum going in terms of engagement, public engagement, yes. Uh, and because the other day we, we, we did our, we hosted that uh, bus pilot test program, yeah. Um, from our observation, not only the public, but uh, the state administrations, um, Excos and all that, they they have now better appreciation of the connectivity and uh, and what could be uh, you know done right in uh, in in this uh, neighborhood. Back to you, Sam. Okay, so I I, I guess um, I guess the the final question is that we are ready. Strangely enough, I mean this is the message I'm getting from you guys. We are ready. It's, it, it, it's, it's, it's just that um, maybe there's a certain percentage of people that are not uh, ready yet, but I think uh, we are ready to take the next step forward. And I, I think maybe um, just now in JSID mentioned, you know, to educate people that your carbon footprint is uh, reducing and with, uh, with Malaysia uh, currently um, kind of accepting the challenge to be carbon neutral by 2050, we have to take that step. And maybe uh, if if we could actually show what the carbon footprint is in in on the train or on on the BRT or or anything else, that would also um, kind of not to say attract, but become personalized to the people that is there. Because fairly often when we when we take the bus or we take the train, we don't think about uh, the other part of it. You know, and, and sometimes we, we become distanced to the, to the act that we are doing. Um, OK, um, I have another question. This is from Lillian, um, uh, which is our 
uh, Vice President of Veritas. Um, with higher density um, allowed for TODs, should local authorities further reduce car parks requirement uh, to TOD to avoid congestion, to avert congestion to existing local roads at TOD areas? Um, I, I'm going to extend this to, to even go to the extent that says that um, the whole idea of, uh, I think Mark says that stop building roads. And I think uh, maybe Jerudi also experienced that, you know, uh, we still have a very, very much a car culture that um, don't allow, not to say don't allow, but that's so strict that it makes it very difficult to actually encourage public transport uh, because uh, of, of whatever legislation is in place. So maybe I could include that besides the TOD part of it. Um, so, Jade Saidi? Okay, let, let me just, because uh, for ECRL, I can say that um, uh, this is something that we totally, um, uh, the, the problem that, that, that we face when we wanted to say that ECRL station will be able to function uh, with a TOD sitting next to it. Um, the challenge is because uh, uh, as opposed to any metro system, uh, the ECRL train frequency is much, much lower. Um, the metro system will have a target of maybe uh, once in every three minutes, one train will pass. Um, so you can actually rely on, on this um, transit system uh, to evacuate you out from uh, from your residential area in the TOD. But, but for ECRL, um, our train frequency, passenger train frequency, it's, uh, uh, it's very low. Um, perhaps uh, maybe once in a half an hour or maybe even some stations we only see once every hour. So definitely we you will not be able to rely on ECRL trains, passenger trains uh, as your main mode of transport. Um, you can only use it for intercity travel. So, so the focus is very, very different uh, from a TOD concept that is applied within uh, within a city area. So, so that's my comment on, on that. Okay, I, I start with you first partly because I know that ECRL has uh, other challenges that we probably yeah. uh, don't have uh, as much control over. Um, so, Inchi Rudy, I know you have problem with the roads. <laughs> um. True, true. Um, but again, TOD guideline uh, is already here. Uh, it's in it's in every local authority's uh, shelf, I guess. Yeah. So it becomes it's just a guideline. Yeah. And I, I believe um, any developers who want to uh, get some incentives from from building a TOD will have to. You know, submit to the state planning committee, and normally it's it's by negotiation because it, it's just a guideline. There's no no rules, in it, uh, you know, uh, setting anything on, on TOD. Just a guideline. Now, um, that is just one part of it. Uh, the the other components of 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 uh, trying to reduce the number of cars on the road would also need to come from uh, the agency who is looking after the road. Uh, like Mark said earlier, stop building roads, uh, stop adding more lanes perhaps, uh, uh, give the roads back to, to the people, to pedestrians, especially, especially in the city centre. Uh, you've seen that uh, you know, coming along very well in, in Johor Bahru together with uh, Think City and, and, and uh, Majlis Bandaraya Johor Bahru. We are now seeing a lot more pedestrian uh, uh, walkways you know, getting uh, highlighted. Um, so yes, uh, many agencies will have to come and chip in. Um, uh, on, on that note as well, uh, we've heard earlier that uh, we need to come with a reliable and uh, consistent services before all these agencies are able to actually commit themselves to to stop cars uh, roaming the road. So uh, from, our, from our part, the services must be there, uh, as reliable as it can be, uh, helped by the um, systems to integrate uh, many, many things. Uh, then I believe um, the agencies uh, responsible will be able to put the uh, foot down on certain certain matters with regard to reducing the number of cars into the city center, whatever means 
necessary uh, and the rules and regulation will be in place by then and uh, uh, the developers you know will be more attracted to and even the, even the people uh, i guess if they can benefit from lower charges maintenance charges then uh, that is something that uh, you know they can make a TOD more attractive. Um, so. Thank you. Mark? Yeah, I think density was mentioned there. Density is one of the guiding principles of, of any TOD, but it needs to be compact and a controlled density. Um, uh, otherwise, the, the TOD just won't work. I think parking will always play a part. Unless we solve the first mile, which is from home to the station, Unless we, unless we solve that first mile challenge, um, you will need parking. But you don't want the people to drive to the TOD and park there and spend the day at the TOD. You want them to come in on the transit system, spend the time with the DICT on the TOD, or be in transit from one TOD to another. So I think parking will, will always play a part, but you don't want the parking to be at the TOD necessarily. For the people that are living there, fine. For the people that are visiting, you want them to come in on the transit system. Yeah, I think uh, everyone is in agreement that we need to kind of reduce this uh, reliance on um, on private vehicles and 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 try to create a more sustainable growth. I mean, uh, personally, uh, you know, when MRT opened uh, near my house in Sungai my wife's first thing was, uh, "My kids, you are taking the MRT to school." Uh, but to get to the MRT station, we have to drive there. And there's a congestion there every morning <laughs> just to get to the station. And it becomes, uh, if it get worse, you might as well just drive to school <laughs> because it's faster. <laughs> so I think this is something that uh, a perennial problems and, 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 and this is something that we kind of need to address. Um, I think uh, we will have one last question. It's almost one o'clock. And I think, um, so I think uh, uh, we, we need to kind of wrap this up. So I think the question here is that maybe a much more wider, not necessarily relating to whatever you're doing, much more wider consideration is that, what do you all want to see on the uh, Malaysian transportation side? You know, um, uh, GSID is looking at the ECRL, you know, uh, just now uh, that was already for talking about MRT, uh, MRT Circle Line and uh, IMBRT has kind of this expansion plan that will include like 2000 kilometers of routes besides the 55 kilometers of trunk roads. And um, maybe I, I think Mark, um, you know, yeah, kind of Petra transit system is kind of new and, and you won't have a, maybe a different strategy for doing things. So maybe just an overall, an idea of what the overall strategy going forward for Malaysia or what you wish to see, what's your wish list um, going forward? Uh, any takers? Okay, I think, um, as we mentioned before, I think for the Klang Valley, let's focus on the Klang Valley. Um, the, once the circle line is, is complete, and it's encouraging uh, listening to Datuk Zaroff today that it will be TOD, uh, not driven, but definitely accommodated. Um, with the trunk lines done, the focus is really next on how do we get the public to use this transportation? We've invested 100, 100 billion ring it by the time we finish LRT3. So one, two, three plus LRT3, there's 100 billion ringgit in rail projects. That's a considerable expenditure. So we need the people to use it. But the challenge as I keep harping and harping about is are we getting the catchment with the trunk lines? Now we can use feeder buses, we can maybe use BRT as feeders or monorail or all types of stuff, but we need to really um, solve the, the catchment issue. As you just mentioned, uh, um, if you have to drive through traffic to get to a station, you might as well keep going, <laughs> you know? So I think it's really that first first mile, last mile. Now that the trunk systems are in place, I think we need to focus on that. That's, uh, that's my opinion. Baby or Rudyant? Oh, okay. So I think uh, for, for for MRL and ECRL. Um, our overall wish for, for, for this project is, is really to uh, increase Malaysia's and also the East Coast region uh, competitiveness. 
uh, in terms of attracting new investment. That that is, I think, the 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 very big um, overall target that we have um, by reducing the transportation costs, the logistics costs that has been. Uh, one of the many barriers of new investment coming into the East Coast. So um, by opening up this new railway, which is focused primarily on freight service, um, we hope um, the logistic costs for manufacturers uh, in the East Coast will, will go down and that would increase the competitiveness of their products. Uh, and that would eventually attract more investment to the East Coast um, and, and that would uh, again uh, balance out uh, the development economic gap that exists between the West Coast and the East Coast of Malaysia. And uh, that is the overall or overarching target or objective that uh, ECRL has uh, for, the, for the general um, uh, population and also the, for the country. I think, yeah, I leave it there. Well, yeah. Yeah. From Skanda Malaysia's perspective, I believe uh, we would love to see more congruency in the execution of uh, policy direction and, and execution. Um, let's let's look at it. I mean, from the people's perspective of from uh, implementers perspective, uh, you don't want to see uh, uh, conflicting announcement and policies, you know, uh, well, at one one end. Uh, the ministry is actually trying to spend hundred billions of ringgit on public transportation, while the other uh, trying to make owning and owning a car easier and lot cheaper. Uh, you know, uh, reducing the fuel and, and and all that. So that 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 is something that uh, we have to to look in a holistic manner. Now that we. Uh, we are also part of COP26, reducing the greenhouse gas and all that. So let's make that into a, a more comprehensive and, and well thought uh, of in terms of uh, policy direction and decision. Because at the end of the day, um, building and planning and building is fun, but maintaining and operating the system is, is a lot of pain, you know, painstaking throughout the whatever life of the system. Uh, thank you. Okay, so Malaysia boleh, tapi can Malaysia maintain eh? <laughs> I guess this is the, the, the biggest question. Uh, if there's any last word, please um, speak now because I think uh, we would like to wrap this up. Uh, if nothing, then I all I can say is that I'm very encouraged by, I think, all the speakers today, this morning, uh, Jay Zaidi, Jay Rudianto, uh, and, and also the distinguished speakers that couldn't attend today, uh, Dr. Zarev, uh, even Tuan Syed has kind of given us a very good, uh, even APAR is, is getting into the game. So so I think, um, and, and it all start with uh, Dato Isham, which kind of set the direction of this sustainable uh, growth direction and, and, and the challenges that we have to go. Uh, we have to move on going forward. So I think uh, this is quite important. So do, uh, so thank you very much, Inge Zaidi, Inge Rudianto, Mark, and um, hope that you can stay uh, later on to in the evening where Mark will give his talk as well. And um, we have other speakers, there'll be eight of them this afternoon. So, but if not, then uh, you can always, uh, it's always on the, um, it's going to be uploaded. So, so you can still, you, you can still get it, <laughs> even if you can't make it today. Um, so thank you again, a distinguished panel and um, for all your time and insight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please jo join me to thank this fantastic panel. It was a fruitful discussion in a different context, different scale and different typologies. Ultimately, people is the key. The, the expert industrial was saying that we are ready. So our audience, are you ready for a new public transportation system? Thank you, Mr. Ong, for being great moderator for the sessions. Before we break for lunch, we would like to give you a quick briefing on what is happening next. The afternoon session is conducted in two live streams where 
you have two speakers speaking at the same time on different topics. You will see stream one and stream two on your screen. Just click on the topic of your choice. If not, you would like to attend both sessions. The entire activities of the event are recorded and will be uploaded for viewing and publication in next coming weeks. Do take notes that, again, stay active. Our leaderboard will close at 4.30 today. Grand prize awaits, stay active. We'll see you back in two o'clock for the afternoon station. Thank you.